Welcome to this video and in this video I'm going to take you through all of the features and a big field test for the LED Lenser HF8R signature. Now this is a top of the range head torch that's absolutely packed with features and to me it's like an iPad with LEDs on and I as a gadget fan absolutely love it. Is it too much for some? Well, let's find out. In this video, I'm going to first take you through a quick unboxing because there's lots of extra bits in here. I'm going to take you on a field test and compare it to my previous test winner two years ago against various power headlamps against the Phoenix. HMR 65 RT, an excellent head torch. So this is going to have to do brilliantly to beat this. I'm going to show you what it's like to use this on a wild camp and on some of my new, numerous night walks. And I'm going to bring you back here for a summary at the end to help you make your mind up and to give you my opinion where what this fantastic head torch is good for. So let's begin with an unboxing. So this is the box, of course. There's the intro on the front. There's the run times on the side there. There's an explanation of all the features and a summary of some of the accessories there on the side. This is the head torch itself, and it's a fairly solid piece of kit. And straight away when you pick it up, you're impressed with just how industrial and metallic and high quality it feels. Now, part of the accessories that comes with it is this headband that goes uh, around your head, of course, with a silicon back. And then this extra top feature that I've put on separately. And there's also the choice of putting this rubber pad on here, which I've already done, and that just increases comfort just by a little. But I found that already it was a pretty good fit on my head. So inside you've got comprehensive instructions, more of a pictorial guide. You've got a seven year warranty, and I've registered this head torch already. You've got safety instructions, you've got a magnetic charging cable. Now, I've used these four for watches, but my verdict is out still regarding use for a head torch, because of course, instead of just having USB-C, you've got to always have one of these with you. And I've got lots of USB-Cs knocking around, but not many of these. So I've actually ordered a couple more, but the benefit is, of course, it keeps it as a completely sealed unit. So you can't change the battery on this. And I know for some people uh, that's a little bit of a turn off, but I've checked with Lead Lenser what their specification for this battery is and how many recharges it'll take. And they've said it's good for about 1000 recharges before it loses performance. Now, if you go out for a couple of uh, night walks and perhaps one, one camp every couple of weeks, you'll be charging this probably every, every two weeks. So with a thousand recharges, it'll be good for many years. You do your own calculations, but that straight away assured me that this seal of battery is not going to be a problem in the absolute indefinite future. So otherwise, in the box, you get a, another mounting plate, and this is to go with the cycle accessory that I haven't tried yet, but you can see that's a handlebar or fork mount, and this clips onto there, and the head torch clips onto there, and this will make it into a fully featured bike torch. So let's go through some of the basic features. Now, I don't know about you, but many times on a camp or night hike, you might wish that you had more features on your head torch. In fact, you might take more than one. So 
You might wish for features such as a flood and a spot, or even things like uh, multi colors, like on this sofa and IF23, and uh, a red green and blue can be really useful for night navigation to help save your night vision for map reading for forensics all sorts of uses now how i like to look at the led lenser hf 8r signature is like it's all of these head torches in one explanation is, is it's like having three head torches in one the first one at first switch on is the adaptive mode lighting so this will be on fairly low here if i put my hand in front there you might see it dim down a bit more of that on the field test but basically this senses ambient lighting and it'll project further out or dim lower according to the conditions next you can go on to a low medium and high setting and on any of these settings you can zoom in and out using this little dial underneath here and from there it'll go on to a flashing mode so incidentally i'm switching it off and on but you can change that via an app on your phone to have a memory mode in fact there's loads of tunable features on the app and i'll put a link below to a, an instruction video on how to do that i'm not going to go into it in this video but you can click on that one and there's a really great one by tom heaney adventure as well that also has a really good app comparison now when you're on any of the light modes you can just press and hold and that will take you on to red green and blue modes and this has got a memory function so if you turn that off and back on again it'll take you straight into red green and blue mode so they really have thought about everything now an additional feature is from any point and any mode if you double press that'll take you on onto turbo mode where all hell breaks loose really but i don't find that much different than full power mode on the adaptive lighting that'll just go on for a short time before it resets to the previous mode that you were in now let's look at weights so with the extra support band on the back that weighs 205 grams and let's just compare that to the likes of the phoenix here and that is 147 grams. So undoubtedly, the lead lens is a fair old weight, but I find once that's on your head and you're moving about, you don't really notice it at all. And the weight of this headlamp is a little bit like a mohair t-shirt. If you think itchy, it's gonna be itchy. If you think heavy, it's gonna be heavy, otherwise, it's not a problem. I've even tried running it and it's a bit, it's okay. Now, for running, I think the optimum weight of a headlamp should be around 120 grams or, or, or less. Uh, and this, of course, is around 200 grams. It's a considerable mass for that kind of activity, but you can't have power and features with it, and toughness and a solid metal construction without mass. Another fantastic feature that I've never seen on another head torch is the heptic feedback. So in other words, when I'm using the zoom and flood dial here, when you get to the end, it'll just buzz. Let's just see if we can pick that up. Don't know if that's picking that up. Um, also, when you turn it off, you get that little buzz. This button, by the way, is excellent for using with gloves on and 
uh, I find it's very, very easy to use. I have seen people comment on other forums that it's probably going to be too confusing just with one button, but I've not found that a problem at all. I have seen other people comment on other forums that just having one button uh, it's going to be a little confusing, but I don't find that at all. I think it's a, a really intuitive system. So I'm going to take you through all of those on a field test and compare it to the Phoenix HM65RT. And I'm going to be going through a sequence in exactly the same spot that I was in two years ago with my professional photographer friend, Jason Friend fantastic landscape photographer, great video tips, great photography tips, and there's a link to his channel below, which is really taken off, and that's a testament to the great skills with his photography. Now, I'm going to go through a sequence now showing the various modes, and I'll just talk you through them. So, LED Lenser Low Map Mode, then LED Lenser Mid, and LED Lenser Distance Adaptive Mode. LED Lenser, LED Lenser Low Wide. LED Lenser Low Zoom. LED Lenser Mid Wide. LED Lenser Mid Zoom. LED Lenser High Wide. LED Lenser High Zoom. And that's Max Boost with the LED Lenser. LED Lenser Max Boost. And then that'll come down to Reactive Mode. And that's Max Reactive Mode. I don't think there's much difference between max reactive mode and the boost but perhaps you can tell with the camera now in reactive mode i can see really well the map there i'm not too dazzled at all but the trick up the sleeve is with the lead lenser we've got red mode to preserve night vision that would be good for night vision but quite hard to see in the map there green mode for the map and that really pops there. It's hard to see the contrast, but fantastic for detail. And then finally, we've got blue mode and the greens on the map are really popping out there. But of course, that should be used for kind of forensics, picking up dirt, blood, that sort of thing. Happily, there's not much dirt and blood on this map. But I really like for walking in at night. I really like the green mode. I think that's really easy on the eye and great to see the detail of the grass and stuff. So, so when I'm doing distance work with the Phoenix and I want to use the map, I'm going to get blinded there. So I'm manually going to have to maybe turn that off and go to a low wide. And then when I want to walk again or I want some distance work, I'll have to manually put that longer lens on. And these head torches, the LED lenser, I'll put the maximum range up on the screen now, is this many meters. So it should easily light up the tree line over there and that bank. So there's a light colored bank going up on, that's, that's 100 meters. And then there's a, a tree line that's another 20 meters behind that. And this is on to boost mode. We've definitely got illum more illumination there. So that's 100 meters and then 120 meters to the tree line. And now on to the Phoenix. Of the Phoenix, we've got a, it's a slightly slower process. We've got to ramp up both sides to get onto max there. And that is shining straight on to the bank 100 meters away and the tree line 120 meters away. Now just for fun we'll get them both going together. Lead lenser, Phoenix. 
Now, two things I really like about the LED lenser is the speed of operation. So when I'm on reactive mode here, going down this path, it'll just adapt all the time. It's really, really easy. And the other thing I like about it that's not talked about much is with this big metal body, it doesn't get too hot. And on my last wild camp, I used it with apprehension when I took it down and I'm near ni nylon, because I've had that before where I've burnt a hole from a head torch in the bottom of a tent uh, ground sheet. But don't be put off by that single button with the LED lenser. It's really, really easy to access all the functions. And I think simpler than the Phoenix. So I'm enjoying this head torch. This is the LED lenser HF8R signature. Absolutely fantastic for this. And the cooking, it kind of goes down low. And then if you can see that with the reactive lighting, it flares light up to light up outside. Absolutely superb. Comfortable as well. So let's sum up the LED lenser HF8R signature. If you want a head torch that wants for nothing, this is the boy. Now, it's quite an investment, but if you look at it as one of your vital and key bits of kit, you would spend £250 on a Gore-Tex jacket, 200 to £400 maybe on a really good down sleeping bag, you can spend 100 to 250 pounds on a sleep mat and heaven knows on, on how much a, a tent would be. So this is part of those vital bits of kit to keep you safe, to help you to enjoy the camp. And when you've got it on that adaptive mode, it's just fit and forget. You'll only have to buy this once with a seven year warranty and a thousand recharges you can look at this as an investment for the future well i hope you've enjoyed this video i've had a lot of fun using this head torch and now this is the one i'm going to reach for all the time i went out last night with the phoenix and wished i'd had the lead lenser with me so it's going to be my go-to so links below to where you can buy these thanks very much It's definitely a wrap.